find your passion, it ignites you as a person. You just feel awesome. Hey, what is going on? So Gary and I are about to record something for our Patreon. Yeah, thank you so much for those people who are supporting me on Patreon. I like really, really appreciate it. So we definitely are gonna put in like extra effort to give you more content than what I put out on YouTube. But I also wanted to, before we get into the Patreon portion, which will be on my Patreon page, um, I wanted to first preface with something that's super important about women's self-defense and something that really isn't talked about a lot. Uh, so when you think of like a self-defense class for women or you think of women's self-defense, like what's the first thing that comes to mind? Like, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Not enough time. <laughs> and what type of like interactions do you typically, like in a typical self-defense class, what is taught to women? Like, what do you think of as like the first move that's taught to women, like non-BJJ? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so when I, sorry. <laughs> um, so when I think of self-defense for women, the first thing that comes to my mind is like a crotch kick um, mm. or like a palm strike or just doing something like very aggressively violent that involves some sort of strike and running away. And let me tell you a couple of stories and like, let's see if you can like figure out what, you know, what my point is. So there is this one story of, um, so there was this female, she was at a bar, she was with her boyfriend and a group of their friends. And the boyfriend had like to be somewhere in the morning, so he left, so she was there with a group of her friends. So one of the guys, that's her friend, was like, hey, let me, you know, walk you home. You know, and she's like, yeah, that's great. Like, it's pretty dangerous. Like, she don't want to walk alone because she was, you know, trying to be safe. So she gets back to her place. He walks in. She's in her bedroom. And he just walks in the door, walks in her bedroom, gets completely butt-ass naked. And at this point, she is just so shocked that she doesn't really know what to do. He picks her up, puts her on the bed, and she is just frozen, and he proceeds to like have sex with her. And meanwhile, she just didn't know what to do because she had obviously, you don't expect that, right? Um, it's almost like that one time when I was bouncing and I was standing there and a female came up to me and she like was putting her hands on me. And even though like I had never imagined having to use jujitsu against a, a woman in a like sexual self-defense situation. So that even caught me off guard. So the problem with, you know, traditional self-defense for women is that we're always imagining a specific instance where it's like somebody jumping out of the bushes and it's a stranger and somebody that we could just instantly, oh my God, like, let me do something super aggressive. But the reality of it is it is a... Um, game of degrees and slowly incrementing the basically like the awkwardness and the nice thing about jujitsu is that you're able to match whatever level you're at with a technique from jujitsu um, so if you watch my previous uh, move of the week we basically went from closed guard to open guard and in a, statistically speaking, in a vast majority of self-defense situations, just being able to hold a person securely in your closed guard and control their arms, like then they're like, holy crap, like what is going on? And then to be able to move space and go to open guard and if they're driving forward, to be able to put your knees up, like this is, just knowing this, this is a move of the week, ladies, try this on the mat, during open mat, like this is super, super valuable to help you um, in a self-defense situation. Then even from here, you know, you can do kicks to the face if they're still on their knees trying to like drive forward, trying to get your pants. So those are kind of like, just knowing that will get you through like a lot of sticky situations. Say stick because it's humid. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you some fun stuff. Um, I'm going to show you a triangle. 
and over on Patreon I'll go like step by step, but during like this video for YouTube, I, I, I want to explain some of the really, really important parts about why this move is so valuable. So the reason why I love triangles is, I'll do some reps while I'm talking. So the reason why I love triangles is, if you're in a self-defense situation and they're trying to unbutton their pants, it's a natural setup. So let's say if somebody's trying to unbutton their pants, they already have one arm in, one arm out, and that's a perfect setup for a triangle. If you're practicing this, um, if you're enrolling, what you can also do is just take one hand and shove it between your legs. <laughs> and basically hop over the, the arm and do it that way. Let me change the angle that you can see it some more. So the value of a triangle over a joint lock, like an arm bar, is the fact that they will go unconscious. And it's a blood choke, not a trachea choke. So what happens is my inner, I'll hold it loosely, that way Gary doesn't go out. <laughs> um, so my inner thigh is against one carotid artery. And then his shoulder and the pressure of my left inner thigh is against the other carotid artery. And then when I close it, and what's even better too, here's a pro tip, if I go this angle and go outward, it makes it even tighter. So the value of that is with an arm bar, you know, the, if you have an attacker that's on like a very high level of aggression, which statistically speaking is very small probability. The moves that I previously showed you will get you out of the vast majority of situations. But when you're in a situation that is like getting more and more violent, it's really nice to be able to choke somebody out because it is no damage, they fall asleep, then you can, you know, get out your zip ties, take a picture, <laughs> go out the, leave the premises, do whatever you need to do, and there's like, there's no lawsuit afterwards. It's not like, you know, and it's not embarrassing because they just go to sleep. And it's not like, it's like if you have, it can get awkward if you know somebody and you just have to go from zero to 100 with, with a strike to the face. Um, and if you train jujitsu, the beautiful thing is like you do this with people, your acquaintances all the time. So it's not awkward to slap on a choke. <laughs> with an acquaintance if you train jiu-jitsu because it's literally what you do all the time. So you know, if he's trying to get fresh, it's like such a perfect setup. <laughs> he's trying to unbutton his pants and use his hip to get my hips up, chop down, make the angle, and he's gonna be asleep very shortly. So I'm going to break down this technique even further on my pre-channel. So thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye.